So I'm here back inside of our most basic program and I just want to show you a couple more uh, important things for when you're first starting to learn to program. The first one is that programming um, is typically not just, just done for yourself. For your purposes, you'll be programming so that uh, your teacher can read and grade and try to figure out what you're doing. In the real world, you'd be working on teams with many, many people. And so it's important to do what's called documenting your code, which means that you're going to write comments to sort of explain what you're trying to do. And there's two forms of comments that you can do. The very first one, I'm going to put it at the top because that's where I'd like you to put a comment um, on your code when you're preparing it to turn it as an assignment. And that's called a multi-line comment. To start one, you put a forward slash and a star, and you'll notice it starts turning stuff green. Okay, so again, this guy's called a multi-line comment. Um, you don't have to type the name of it there to get it to work. What you should probably do is put your name, and then for each program you write, you usually want to give an overview of what it does. So this program reminds you not to forget to be awesome. All right, and when you're done typing the lines, you close this guy off with a star and a slash. And you'll notice the color of my other code reverted back to its regular uh, appearance. Um, the nice thing about Visual Studio is it tries to give you some help so that you can look at just small subsections of your code at a time. So I'm able to close this guy off um, so that I don't have to see the top part. I can open it back up. Okay. Um, this guy was a multi-line comment. I'm also able to put comments directly next to lines of code I've written using single line comments. So let's um, say, okay, um, just in case people don't know what this is, let's, uh, let's put there what it is. Um, in these very simple, simple, simple programs, when you're commenting each line, um, it sort of seems redundant. When you start making more complicated programs, it will become more important to explain what you have attempted to do there, particularly if you're using some like weird math techniques and stuff. So for right now, I'm just going to put that in there to show you what it looks like. Um, it's not that important that I wrote that next, that it didn't really explain a whole heck of a lot to me. Okay, so those are comments. Um, another thing you're going to find out right away is if you don't type stuff exactly as it should look, um, you're going to get syntax errors. So let's say I forgot to put this semicolon here and then I tried to run. So control F5, let's build it. Right away it says um, there were errors. Do you want to try the last version? Well, usually you want to say no because you might have just added some stuff that you want to test out. So I'm going to say no. And then I would like to get to my error list, which is right here. I don't know if I can get to it. I've got this recording software. There we go. And it tries to give me some hints as to where my problem is. So this tells me um, on line 13, and I'm seeing the line number here, it says there's a syntax error. There's a missing semicolon before return. Well, a lot of times it will talk about the stuff that's appearing on the line after the error because your problems are cascading down. So I'm going to look right in front of this guy. And here, sure enough, there's my line without the semicolon. So I need to add it back in. Um, sometimes errors will be uh, listed so that they make a lot of sense like this one did. Sometimes they'll be more cryptic and you should talk to your teacher about what that could potentially mean. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is that there's some color coding going on in Visual Studio here. You'll notice that a lot of this stuff is blue. Blue indicates that these words are keywords, which means they already have a meaning and you cannot change what they are. Um, and so that means later when we make uh, variables to hold information and stuff from the keyboard, you can't choose those names because they are... Um, already meaning something specific to the program. So if it's blue, you can't use that word yourself for something later. Okay, so that's just a little bit more about basic C++ programming.